we're good. And we're good to go. Um, I will have to call you back. I'm just in the middle of something. Okay, I will. Thanks. That's Gidget. I don't know if you know Gidget. She does uh, tech stuff for computers. No. She's extremely good. She's... Okay, let me see what I'm doing here. All right. Okay, we're recording. All right, sir. So, we have our official two meters. We got the tape out and measured it. That's it, exactly. Um, I have no criteria. I don't generally have one. Mm -hmm. I, I roll it around in my head. Mm -hmm. What would Grant and I ever talk about, you know? So, <laughs> and a uh, number of subjects. There's uh, obviously your work here at the gallery. Yes. Your history with Rogers. Yes. Your history with Georgina. Oh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't really need to write a whole lot down. I mean, it was yes. uh, this. Um, I'm Tim Danbrook, and my uh, podcast is called Georgina Speaks. Which I love that, by the way. I absolutely love that. Thanks. The um, yeah. and I'm here for. A, I love you, Grant, but I'm here for enough. <laughs> for I'm here for a recording uh, lesson. You know, like you, your history with this whole process, which is yeah. not new. No. I've been around for a long time and I've been doing uh, various uh, types of media. I've done TV, I've done radio, print ads. So right. I've been around for a very long time. And there's, there was no formal training. You know, the first time I did TV was City TV. Yeah, well, and I've, Ann Romer, you worked with Ann Romer, right? I, I did Ann Romer and I had an hour with her and she very much and a very, very professional um, she ruled told the roost. me how it was going to go, and when she knocked on the the desk, that was when I should speak. And when she knocked on it again, that's when I. So it it was, you know, I don't know, was I in my late, my yeah? I mean, she was a professional. Yeah, she was definitely a professional. And I had my makeup done in Gord Martineau's makeup chair. Right. So I go in. I think I was the managing director for a youth organization, a youth management right. organization. So, you know, I go in and, yeah, I've always been the face of something because right. I'm a big personality. But to kind of go into city TV and have people kind of handle you <laughs> and move you where you need yeah. to go. So I thought, okay, I survived city, but I did global. I did Rogers in Toronto too. So right. it really, it... It was just learning how to be comfortable. I mean, I'm looking at myself here and I'm seeing the pimple here yeah. and the, the hair is thinning here and just kind of going in and really just letting that passion that you feel about what you do yeah. shine through. And just... some people just can't do it. Um, and I always say every time I go on camera, not so much with Georgina Life, because with Georgina Life, I'm with my friends and my colleagues and my community. But when I would do Toronto TV, I would want to throw up. Like, Let me just check. Just. Okay, can you talk a little bit more about that and your about, original? About well, city, I just realized that. TV and wanting to throw up every time yeah. <laughs> I went on television. Well, it's that whole, <laughs> you know, it, it's. I would just kind of go in there and and just the the magnitude of where you are and and potentially who's watching. And the reality is it's like you know when you do your podcast, when I do my Facebook videos, right, right. it could be me, you know, <laughs> and the dog and one yeah. other person. <laughs> well, it's me and my trailer and uh yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny, you know. I, I yeah. um I've owned about 40 houses in my lifetime because yeah. I build, move, and do yeah. whatever, whatever. I can honestly say I've never been more comfortable in a spot. Yeah. In the, I live by myself. I yes. got a 40 foot trailer. I sold my last house and I put my money in the bank. Yeah. I'm like, uh, everything there is functional. I just sit, I look out the window, and my kitchen's there, and my yeah. bedroom's there. Yeah. So, I mean. Well, and we were talking earlier. I mean, I am, I am getting close to 65. I'll be 65 in November, and yeah. I'm starting to look you don't at look it, by the way. What, just, uh, thank you. God's been kind. Yes. Yeah, and so is. Well, it's with your nature to take care of yourself, too, so that yeah. helps. Yeah, that helps. I mean, as I said earlier, I guess since 2004, I've been the face. 
You know, I can clearly, I haven't been. You know, we could do one of those posters, you know, this is what happens if you don't, you know. Well, I get people who say, oh my God, you don't look 64. And then I have to say, well, what does that look like? Yeah. Because yeah. someone show me where that picture is in, in a book. Yeah. But I, I think the key piece for me in my ability to be comfortable with, <laughs> with who I am, and we did an interview a couple of years ago about that journey. Well, yeah, I was I was going to let you decide. <laughs> let you. I, I'm going to throw that in there well, somewhere. I'll bring it up. I'll, okay. I'll discuss it a little bit at length if you're comfortable with yeah. all of that. I, I wasn't sure. There's there's a couple of subjects I weren't sure in terms of how to deal with it in yeah. relation. There's your being gay. Yeah. <laughs> like fabulously gay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, if yeah. I'm not, if I can't be fabulous, yeah, I'm not doing. Yeah, I'm going away. Yeah, the <laughs> hell with it. Eh? Well, you know what's funny because. Yeah. What um, for myself when we first met? Yes. Um, I, I, my whole life, I, I've never had a problem with gay people or homophobia. Yeah. Yeah. But I was born in 1956. Yes. So there's always a little redneck in there, <laughs> and and that little guy goes off around yeah. certain things. So I wasn't yeah. sure how I, uh, how I would behave. Yes. Feeling wise and comfortable, like interaction wise. I mean, yes. I would never be. Over, like nasty or I would never be a bad person. I have never had homophobia, yeah. but you do have things that go off yeah. when you're around somebody who's outwardly yes. gay. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you would be a homophobia meter wandering around. Like you just watch who goes off and who doesn't. Eh? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. It's like, it's, it's, I've done a lot of training. I mean, I've I been bet. training for GTTI. Um, yeah. I, talk a bit about that. If you wouldn't mind that, that in, in well, it, there can be no more noble, in my my yes. my opinion, is being there for people that are going through what you've been through. Yeah, it it was nuts for me. I mean, I I was working in arts and culture in Toronto for a number of years, right. and I was the head of an education program. And I realized that everyone that I hired was an educator, and and I was not. I was certainly an educator in the game of life. Yeah. But in terms of on paper, so I went back to school and became a teacher of adults. So I connected with GTTI when I was the ED of the Learning Center in Keswick. Yeah. And after three years when that relationship ended, David Jean, who was the ED at the time, he and I had, you know, some time to just meet people and there's that connection. Yeah. yeah. And I let him know that um, I was taking some time off, but I was looking to do some consulting or some training, something like that. Um, and he called me back a week or so later and said, I've got this money from the government. I've got a contract to come in and do some in-house training. Would you be interested? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, uh, no money, some money. Sure, without question. So it, that was truly an amazing experience because I got to go in and really speak to people who didn't have a voice or right. if they had a voice they couldn't right. find their voice so there was all of those soft skills sure. so you know yourself you go build houses so you get dirt under your nails which would never happen to me yeah you're it's manual labor but if you're going to pitch to a bank for sake of argument, you're looking for money or whether you're going to a developer, you need to have a little finesse. Yeah, some you can't skills. go in with dirt under your nails and ripped jeans and a t-shirt. I, te I tend to, though. That's always been a bit of my, uh, <laughs> how do you like me now? I've been kind of one of those guys, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And, yeah. and, and I can tell you my skills have increased in recent years, communications wise and otherwise. Yeah. And uh, I find a, a nice balance for myself. Well, and... And I think that's what I wanted to do, and I believe why David, I mean, I then certainly I'm qualified to do it, but I think with David and I, with the relationship we had, he knew I would tell it like it is. Right. He knew that I wouldn't go in and do this book learning that didn't make sense, because you can't yeah. lose sense of, of who you are. So to go back to me being all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's all about being who you are, but also being relevant. Right. So working with David Jean at GTTI uh, and then going back and doing some more training with uh, another ED right. was amazing because I got to, I got to, that's articulate. <laughs> I was able to introduce some of those rednecks. Yeah, I guess so. Eh? 
So your redneck meter was going off pretty to good. To a different community. And I walked in in my very first date anywhere, especially if it's something like that. I will say, so let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I am. <laughs> and then let them... I love it. And then let them wait. It, so, it, yeah, I mean, working for Harbor Front in Toronto, really, I went to work for them so that I could be who I am. Right. Because right. if you can't be gay in the arts, then you might as yeah. well just pack up your suitcase and yeah. go. So, you know, I really came to the region in 2004, and I was something, I was something, someone oh. very, very different. Yeah, and absolutely. it hasn't always served me well, without question. But for the most part, you just find out where you fit. And I do to some degree. I love what you just said. So how do you like me so far? Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't, well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know. Yep. So, I mean, I think that I've, I've been on a journey that I'm still on. Yeah. Because I, I do believe it's all about lifelong learning, whatever that looks like. It is like. about lifelong learning. And uh, I, I'm so happy that I've settled into, I just, I, there was an old guy, he ran in a treatment center down on Broadview. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a famous one down there. It's a yep. group house. Yeah. And his old guy, and uh, he he was speaking, he told a story at an AA meeting one night. Yeah. And he said, you know, I still go to work every day at that place. And he's like 80. <laughs> and he said, for one purpose only, because I get to go home and tell my wife every night, you wouldn't believe what I've seen today. <laughs> and, it's and that's, it's true. it really is it, eh? Like, it's, it's the true. whole thing, yeah. It's so true, because I have said, um, and Jeremiah and I have, have a good relationship at Rogers. Yeah. Um, but he and I have had some conflicts. And I've just said, you have no idea how difficult it is to be me. Yeah. No like, do you think I just walk in and I'm, you know, very well dressed <laughs> <laughs> and the hair and the makeup and all the rest of that. But, you know, when you try and be your authentic self, as certainly it's more work than how it, it, it than, is and no one pays you for that no it's uh yeah yeah really <laughs> does it the hell it, with it it just it just doesn't work so have you ever blatantly realized at any given point in time no that guy actually doesn't like me it's got nothing to do with me being gay yes where you the first instinct is oh he does he's homophobic and then you realize he actually just doesn't like me that's do you, do you i was know, curious i'm going to tell you that 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't go there. Right. I think that is because it is usually blatantly obvious, obvious. Yeah, yeah. if that's what it is. And then, but it is that I've said on Georgina Life, I've said on my own Facebook postings, I'm a huge fan of self-reflection. So right. since I created some awareness around who I am, Yep. And that's not always fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a little bit of therapy. Sure, of course. <laughs> that yeah. I'm a big fan well, of. Well, and you're wandering around giving other people a bit of therapy every <laughs> day too, which is, <laughs> and no charge. Well, it's it's crazy. When I when I decided to semi-retire yeah. um, and go back to school at 60, um, and thank you, Jen Anderson at, at uh Rogers yeah, introduced me. The Andersons to are great. Georgina yeah. Life yeah. way back when. So when I decided to do that and I yeah. graduated from the life skills coaching course, I called up Jim and said, Can you get me on Georgina Life? I want to talk about reinventing yourself after 60. So I went into the first semester of that course and went, Holy crap, I've been doing this for years. Yeah, everything that they're. Without even thinking about it. Well, there's it was... some instinctual survival stuff that you develop. Yes. And with certain lots in life. And uh, yes. yeah, that's. An old woman told me one time that's uh, God's remedial ways. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the cool thing is, if uh, out of the dysfunction, <laughs> the lessons that you learn to survive in the dysfunction, yes. when you finally sort it out, yes. you get to keep the good stuff. Yes. So that that was that's so uh, that's why I like to look at a positive side of it, you know. Well, and I think it, you know, we have all experienced tragedy. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. Adversity. Yeah. Adver <laughs> <laughs> all that six chapters in the book. That's yeah, a lot of adversity is like. To write. Yeah. Um, prejudice. I mean, you know, especially now at this time with what's going on in the U.S. and the politics oh my and God, yada, yeah, yada, yeah. all the rest of that, Black Lives Matter. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to share this with you because 
I I was a little taken aback with with the position I took around the whole Black Lives Matter uh, right. piece. Um, I was very fortunate to grow up never seeing color. Yeah. I was not raised that way. Raised by a single mom. Right. I am who I am because of her. And I had a conversation with a woman of color um, at a smoothie place across from the gym, which I couldn't go to because it's not open. Yeah. And said, um, I must have dropped off and missed my white privilege. Is that because... Yeah. I remember being hungry, having holes in my shoes. Right. And going to work at 13 in order to get bus fare to go to school. So, I yeah. guess. And then if you want to talk about prejudice and hate, gee, I think I've experienced that. Well, it becomes, yeah. You know what? It becomes uh, a matter of discussing one subject at a time. And that's where we, we came up with that. There were so many conversations going on. And she said, Grant, I don't want to negate what you're saying. Uh, smart girl. But every day my son yeah. leaves the house, I have to worry about whether he'll come home. He's only got to run into one redneck. Six foot black man, big boy, only 16. But yep. So I... So we had a good conversation yeah, about nice. it, and I realized... Did you yeah. see my color chart? <laughs> no. Oh, you didn't? Well, I interviewed a guy by the name of Edward Turney. He is okay. a black guy, about 72, I think, now, and he grew okay. up in the Jewish area in Toronto. Yes. He has a really cool outlook on life, and he's yeah. a musician, so they're colorblind anyway. Yes. And yeah. uh, But he had a, a really good upbringing, and so he, we had a really good interview. Uh, but the one thing he brought up was... There's no such a thing as a black person or a, that microphone that you're talking into is black. Yes. The the border on the iPad there is white. Yes. You ever seen a white or a black person? We're all people of color. Well, without question. Yeah. So it was yes. really neat. So I uh, I got so excited about that concept. That yeah. It's a weird thing to say when you tell somebody like you, well, you're actually a colored person, you know, and they go, <laughs> okay. But it's true. And so I did a, I found one of those makeup color charts with all the faces from, yeah. from, from oh. almost from albino. Oh. Oh and then I put gosh. no such a thing as a white person. Right. I put a white strip yes. and a black strip. No such yeah. thing as a white person. No yeah. such thing as a black person. Yeah. What color are you? And I put that. Well, I put it on my face. Like it well, was. and that's common sense. But that would be seen to be so politically incorrect oh, by good. so many people. Oh, good. Oh, oh God. <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, I'm. Oh I'm my God. Just so not. Yeah, God help me from the political correct pinheads. Uh, pin. I shouldn't be not, not, not pinheads. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are allowed to identify however we need to yeah. identify. But I think for me, I mean, yes, quite clearly I identify as, as a, a gay man. And right. I reached a point in my life where moving forward in my career, for the lack of a better word, yeah. um, when you work in not-for-profit for as many years as I have, your career is working in not-for-profit yeah. and doing the very best work that you can. You figure out where you're good at and you do it. Yes. I build houses. You know what? Yeah. I, I've been building houses for 35 years. Yeah. I've done a hundred other things mm -hmm. because I got ADD, whatever the hell you like. <laughs> like I put it to good use, my ADDTA. <laughs> I got a million things going all the time. I can never really settle into one thing. Yeah. I just never have been able to. And so yeah. I, I've learned to use it. And so uh, yes. I, I make my living building houses and, and, and I do okay at it, you know? Yeah. So I, I, that's there, carved in stone. And I do a whole bunch of other stuff that I love. And actually, the freedom that comes from that. Yes. So then I never have to worry about making this about money, make my art about money, my music. Yes. I finally, actually finally consider myself an artist almost, you know. <laughs> well, but you should. Well, yeah, I, I believe so, yeah. And I think the challenge is the, the, the labels have so many different connotations. Yeah. And, you know, what, what do I do best? I can engage a room full of people in a heartbeat. Yeah. I can make you laugh. Fortunately, I'm not making any money at that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm blessed with the ability to say something that a lot of people want to hear. That didn't come from the diplomas that I would no. hang on my wall if I was that arrogant. That came from the experience that we shared, yep. being raised by a single mom in the 60s, yep. being dirt poor, 
Yeah. Living on the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. And all of those really less than fabulous things. Yeah, and for a period of time, relishing the life on the wrong side of the tracks. That's yes. <laughs> so, well, with, yeah, without, of course. <laughs> without question. I mean, yeah, yeah. people want to read my book that I probably will never write. Not because they're really concerned about the journey. They want the dirt. Yeah, everybody wants, of course. <laughs> give me the... They want it. They want to see well, what's well, under they that. They think they want it until they start. And they go, whoa, 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 nice, whoa, thanks, I appreciate it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and you realize, too, when you start to think about your tomorrow, and I'm a big fan of what is your tomorrow, and you define that yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who the heck knows? You know, I decided when uh, this opportunity, when someone reached out to me and said, Georgina Art Center and Gallery is looking for an executive director. Let's talk about that completely for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that you know? was out of the clear blue. Uh, I want to say it was actually Phil Rose Donahoe who mentioned it to me. He's yeah. a former town employee. Right. Um, and I was doing some work for GTTI and it kept coming and coming and coming and coming and I was pushing it away. I just that I don't... I. I just started my life skills coaching business. Right. I've got a few clients. I'm doing, you know, Georgina Life. Right. I'm doing good work. I'm not making a lot of money, but I'm I'm good. Yeah. But every time I walked into a room, there was someone there who said, "You need to apply for this." And I thought, "Okay, damn it." Yeah. I will do it. I will go do it. And Phil said, so I called up Phil and said, is the posting up? Is it, what's going on? Is the How job do I do still this? available? Yeah. He said, well, I know they've been interviewing. Um, and there was a part of me that went, oh, great, if they're interviewing, then I'm not going to get it. Right. Because I <laughs> know what it's yeah. like when you're well, recruiting. Well, it's funny when I say, and, put it on the paper, <laughs> the years and so on. You think, well, geez, but when you actually start putting it on, you realize, well, wait a minute, I have some experience. And huge. I, and, I, huge. and you have huge connections to the art. Well, certainly in true. And culture and... Uh, very definitely. Just, just <clears throat> historically, your personal history, <laughs> oh, you're going to have lots of communications, lots of... Well, and I... I wasn't sure what I was going to bring. I knew right? I could be an effective executive director. Yeah. I knew that I was on TV. I knew that people leaned in to hear what I had to say. Yeah. So I knew that I presented fabulous. Right. But I just no, wasn't it's not, sure. It, well, for me, I shouldn't say it's not, but for me, it's not that you present fabulously because you do. <laughs> well, yes. But it is what you present. Just so we're clear. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's very kind. And, uh, it's, and, that, and it's the truth. Uh, it, it, you don't yes. get anywhere just on being fabulous. If the, yeah. if the substance wasn't there, you wouldn't be there. Yes. And, and you you've know, always been there. Thank you. Yes. And you okay. know that that's part of our journey. With Ann Romner in City TV <laughs> and all of the voices. You have always been there. Yes. Yourself personally. Yes. And fabulous bonus. You know, yeah, it just, it's a presentation it, issue. But <laughs> yeah. the substance was there or you wouldn't have been there. Yeah. I think especially here yeah. with, the, with the gallery. And, and I mean, you never know what you're walking into when no. you go into a new job. And the gallery had experienced some challenges. Um, and I just thought, you know, this is a good way to end my career. I started in the arts. Well, it's funny. I started well, my artistic career Yeah. five years ago, when I was, like four years ago when I was 59. Yep. I was started writing and recording music, and I yes. won that the Made in Georgina mm -hmm. Songwriters Contest. Yes. <laughs> Don't ask me how, but I did. What? But that was that was my first experience in being in music and doing mm -hmm. anything with it, and it ended right here, like that whole thing with my doing my. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I. Uh, I mean, we don't know our <coughs> own value until we take the time to look. Can you imagine without it, art, music, and in our culture? Well, I can't, and that and that's the challenge now. I mean, we've been closed since March. We've not been able to generate any revenue at all. Um, the funding, and I say this all the time, so I'm looking right at the camera there. Yeah. Um, funding for the arts continues to be trashed. That's not going to change anytime soon. No. Uh, I say funding in the bigger picture. Yeah. Um, I will give a shout out to the town of Georgina. 
is very supportive of the gallery. I'm working very hard with them to right. rebuild the relationship that got a little bit lost. So they're support of me yeah. and the work that we're trying to do here at the gallery, because I'm not going to pretend I'm not a part of that. Right. Um, but the local community is very, very supportive of the arts. But unfortunately, no disrespect to the beautiful pieces we see on the walls, right. that doesn't generate revenue. No, it, it doesn't. And uh, I, I thought about it from time to time when it comes yes. up because I, I come up to the jams here. Yes. And I come and I look around and I, I'm thinking it's just like an amazing body of work. Amazing. And uh, a big slice of our culture and Georgina culture. Yes. And uh, so how do you get someone to get off their ass and get up in the car and drive up and have a wander through the gallery? Like, how do you get people to do that on a Saturday afternoon? And uh, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. And I will share with you, and even though none of it's really public, we have just completed our new strategic plan. Oh, good. Which has a different focus. We are really looking at the art through the broadest lens. Right. We're adding the cultural piece because it is now, and I'm saying this again, if the town of Georgina hears it, we know that the community is concerned about the deficit in culture. So right. we are working in partnership to look at how we can add culture yeah. to the programming that, that's done at the town and out of culture here. And the arts in many communities, ours, I believe ours, especially because we haven't developed yeah. yet as, as an, a unique, like we're a unique community, but uh, we haven't developed our, to the point where we go say, okay, there's something we have to preserve and we have to, yes. like, at, make it, it part of culture, part of our life. Yes. Really don't. I mean, uh, no. most, most people don't. And that's so why I love Cuba so much. Yes. And I'm Mexico. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, Latin people. That, yes. It's you fair. can stop any one of them on, yes. on a street corner yes. and they'll tell you on the spot. Who they are, what they stand for, yes. and yeah, yeah. And the, and the gallery has a very rich history. I mean, Catherine Babbock, who started it yeah. uh, many, many years ago, did absolutely amazing work. There was money then. Yeah. So that's the challenge. And I think when you're in a small community, I'm not going to say complacent, because there will be someone out there who will say that right. I was being mean. But when you have no money... And you're successful at doing what you do, you find a comfort level yep. with that. Yep. So our intention for 2020 <laughs> at the gallery was to really start to mix it up. Yep. And and force people to step outside of their comfort levels. Sure. Even our own. I mean, I'm very passionate. That drives the board crazy sometimes. Yeah. Um, sometimes I overstep. But it comes from a place of of, of goodness. So yep. for us now, 2020 is in the crap, or I can't put it any other yeah, good way. Luck, eh? So 2021 for us is going to be moving our strategic plan forward when all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. Right. Work more closely with the town. And the work, schools. And the schools. The schools, I mean, that announcement's made. They're going back. No field trips. So that looks after that. Got to take the art there. Exactly, and we will do that. We have a renovated space downstairs. Thank you, Trillium, and thank you, God, that I wrote a fabulous proposal that got us the money. Yeah, cool. So now it's okay. So this is what the world looks like now. What is the Georgina Art Center and Gallery going to do with that? Right. So it is look at theater, look at music, build on the open mic. I mean, Ed put that into place. No, Ed's a good guy. Ed's Ed, a really Ed is he's a sweetheart. Yes, and Ed is a typical educator, which sometimes I just want to smack him because <laughs> educators are a breed unto their own, as yeah. are artists. Well, you know, somebody a teacher told me one time that uh, that the, for their entire life, almost adult life, yes. every day, all day, everybody that comes to them asks them a question and accepts their answer <laughs> as law, <laughs> as the truth, as, as Absolute. Yes. And so they just, some well, gravitate towards it because they're yes. like that, and some just develop that way. And so well, it's kind of understandable. When I, uh, I'm a lifetime Weight Watchers member, which is WW now, but when I joined their team as, as a wellness coach, yeah. I dealt with that. I did six meetings a week. And if Grant said it, yeah, then they went home and they put that into practice. And I would say, 
what do I know? Yeah, yeah. I know what works for me. Of course. But, you know, I'm a big fan of take my advice. I'm not using it anyway. Yeah. So just like, kind of. I like that. It. So, yeah, I get that. I think, because I do believe educators are born. Yeah. They yeah. truly, truly are. And whether that's, you know, in, in Ed's case, as I believe he was music and phys ed. For me, I'm an educator in the in the in the game of life. Yeah, I have the pieces of paper, but I realize in all the work I've done, it's been the life experience yeah. that I marry to that curriculum, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Like with GTTI, we had curriculum, we had uh, the soft skills, the communication, how to hold your temper, conflict <laughs> resolution. I've only developed that in recent years. Some of us struggle with that all of our lives. So, yeah. you know, I do think it is, is about doing the very best job that you can. Everybody that knows me, when I'm about ready to lose my crap yes, on the spot, on the job site or on the phone or whatever, all I have to say is, you know what, I got to go now and I'll come back. Yes. Uh, literally like that. I just say, you know yes. what, I got to go now and I'll come back because mm -hmm. I can just feel it coming. Mm -hmm. And it's like, nothing is worth that anymore for me. I'll see you. I'll come back and uh, we'll work this out later. Yeah, and, I, and it, in a heavy way, it happens for me. And, yeah, uh, well, I mean, and we've had conversations about you being somewhat controversial from time to time. <laughs> no, really? Which, which <laughs> I am controversial without yeah. question. Um, but it is really finding that balance without losing who you are. I'm relishing my independence right now in this process. <laughs> I, I really am. And, you know, and I love the freedom of it. Yes. And I try to take responsibility for it because yes. I, 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 uh, I find myself just ready to be, to be really outrageous. And then I think, well, really, Timmy, what are you doing that for? <laughs> so is there any value in this? And if there's value yes. in what I, I don't care what it is, I'll yes. say it or do it yes. if there's value in it. Yes. If I'm not just doing it for the outrageous... Yes, because yeah. that... Well, it's fun, but, you know, like... It's fun, uh, but it doesn't serve you. No, it doesn't serve... Well. No, it doesn't <laughs> Not serve. you, personally, but but any of us. It, it, yeah. and, and I've realized that now as I've been doing the reflection, self-reflection about what is my tomorrow. Yeah. And just the... I mean, I want everything in the gallery. I want it to happen now. It's come yep. on. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Of course. Stop. Yeah everything in its time and the only people losing sleep over my inability to get things going as fast as i want them to is me yeah right so, so go to sleep <laughs> relax go to sleep You'll, exactly we'll see how what tomorrow brings exactly and just you know we know who we are we know what we have to give um i will say in terms of this community whether I was with the Learning Center, I was yeah. with Big Brothers, Big Sisters of York a few years ago, now with the gallery, my relationship with Rogers. It's all about those relationships. Yep. They don't need to look the same. What are they doing now at Rogers? I don't... Uh, there, uh, Jeremiah sent, because we have a, a chat, a Georgina yeah, yeah. Live chat that okay. we connect with. Um, he's in the studio. He was there with the mask. Trying to get ready? He's doing, they're shooting a couple of shows and right. the social distancing. Yeah. We did Georgina Live via Zoom. Right. Which was a little, I've bit, seen that. Was a little bit odd. Crazy. Trying to do a warm and fuzzy close community show via Zoom. It, it was tough. And, and we wanted it but to you be have, relevant. But you have followers. What, you, <laughs> you have followers that were probably quite happy to have that come back. Yes. You know what I mean? So, they, yes. they okay, there they are. I, we know where they are now. And I know, yes. okay, we're, you know. Hasn't and gone try, away. And we tried to find that balance. Yeah. I mean, we, we realized that some of the content of previous, of what would be a GL show yeah. in the middle of a pandemic yeah, yeah. really wasn't key. But for the host, it was like, we don't want it to be the doom and gloom. And Jeremiah and Jim Anderson, same mindset. Yeah, yeah. We can't ignore it. We've got to acknowledge it. We've got to speak to how we're coping with it, how the community is coping with it. Yeah. But we just kept saying to ourselves, we've got to lighten up a little bit. And for me, of course, it's all humor. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be humor. Of course. So I tried to keep that going. Right. I mean, I did interviews with, with Gary Dernfeld. And, yeah, Gary's a good guy. I interviewed yes. him the other day. Yes, and, uh, and I spoke with him 
Yes, quite truthfully, I called him up and said, okay, I'm doing this, Gary. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> What's funny. it like? He Eddie. said it was absolutely delightful. Uh, you know what? I, I love the guy to death. and yes. I, 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 He's like the, what, the last person in the world I would ever chum up with in my life yes. for who he is and the way that he deals with everything. Yeah. And, and, uh, but somewhere along the line, I just, got to, I just fell in love with he's his. He's real. He's a very real person. And everything he says comes from a basis of who he is, and he means it. And his submission that he put out every day, yeah. that's his folk music. Yeah. Me, I'm putting my whatever I'm, that's him, very real, putting what, and he's an authority on the subject that he speaks well, about. Without question, I mean, I, you know, I had a very candid conversation with him before yeah. he came on Georgina Life, because he has certainly had some adversity yeah. in his life. Yeah, yeah and been treated unfairly totally uh, and we wanted to provide him with a platform to clarify some things yeah which he did and and that was great so that was my immediate connection yeah. it's like out of all of this stuff down here you find a way to rise above it yeah and uh and he did and you guys did like it Love, love, love him. One of my yep. first Zoom interviews was with him. Um, and for those of us who are extroverts, this is hell. Yeah, absolutely. Without question. So <coughs> well, really... for me, you know what it's like to have that chip on your shoulder for people of authority or people who speak with authority? Yes. I know you wouldn't know. I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know how I looked at Gary the first couple of times I've seen his yes. stuff and I'm going, what the hell? Who is this guy? You know, and... Uh, and then I just, I'm so glad I took the time. Yeah. We missed so many things in our life. I did because I let that attitude I had steer me away from things that I would have, I could have enjoyed my whole life and didn't, you know. So later in life now, I really, I grab it when it comes along. Like a decent guy like Gary, the, the opportunity to have somebody like that in your life. Yes. That just wouldn't even yeah. been possible 20 years ago. For well, me. and 20 years ago, you probably wouldn't have got that kind of transparency. No, maybe not. And I think to his experiences where he was certainly kicked when he was down. Yeah. Um, that creates a whole different individual. I mean, I say I'm a Scorpio, I'm a chameleon, I can be whatever yeah. I need to be. But I do think that when you discover who you are in your very core. Yeah. And I think that probably you were the man you are back then there was just all of that other stuff just, well the whole thing that you keep spinning just to keep someplace to hide in it or something i, I have no idea i you know i don't even yeah. care i don't care anymore i just i'm happy yeah. i'm really content eh well and i think you know we define what being a survivor means yep and i'm a survivor and, and whether that be the experience that we shared or whether you know my life was certainly not a walk in the park so no, it took me many, many years to really learn to be authentic and as transparent as I could while protecting myself. Comfortable in your own skin. But you spent you so are. many years, especially in business, yeah. where you're presenting whatever you need to be. And having been a not-for-profit for all of these years, that's a learned behavior that has to be unlearned to some degree. I think there's something about an environment. Like for me, it was in a recovery environment or yes. helping people or doing different. It's yeah. in the end, all the getting is in the giving. And you don't realize all that when you're giving of yourself yeah. to help people and so on, and which is a nice thing to do. And even and it's altruistic, maybe, but mm -hmm. it's but it's it's good. It's good work. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you realize, <laughs> I'm actually, okay. I'm doing this for me. Like, I'm getting well, easily as much well, as I'm far, giving. You don't tell people that. Yeah, yeah. It's all well, no, I, I, I spent the first two years in recovery, yeah. just in every, my, every night till two in the morning with newcomers that come into the programs and stuff at the coffee shop. Yeah. Just letting them know, you know, relax. It's going to be fine. You know, yeah. just if you fall off the wagon, don't beat yourself up. It's not going to serve any purpose. Just... Yeah. Get back as soon as you can. Like I just spent two years doing that, and I realized in the end, I was that was all my therapy. Never mind them. I was all you know what I mean. It was uh, the getting. I, I got so much out of giving. It wasn't funny. Well, and you realize what it is. You know. I mean, I just it came up in one of my memories. Yeah. And my husband posted this. I did. Uh, I used to donate 
workshop time for a learner's conference for adult right. learners. Right. Um, and I think I charged for this one. Um, and my husband, for whatever reason, posted all of the comments that I got from the participants. Right. And I was reading them, and I, and again, and I say this all the time, holy crap, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, I, I would read them if I were you, and everyone, who is that guy they're talking about? <laughs> it, exactly. Yeah, who, you, you don't, it's no. so nice to have somebody talking yes. about somebody that's nice and that's you. Because we're so busy doing what we do that we don't take the time. And I do this here, and God love the board because they do say to me, you know, you have to realize that you have done a lot since you walked through the door. Yeah, you make a difference. But you there's make... still that thing where, and maybe it's an age thing. I don't think so because I'm not hung up on my age. But no. maybe it's just like... The need to finish something, but then I say I'm a lifelong learner. And never that's a enough. Did I do enough? Is it enough? Am I finished? You're never going to be finished, just no. so you know it. And we don't want to be finished <laughs> no. because then we're six feet under. No, or I. Uh, I'll have lots of time to sleep then. You know, like that's my whole uh, <laughs> thing. So yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I mean, re haven't reached my best use before date. <laughs> Uh, well, what was Gary that? said that the other day when yes. I was talking about my uh, um, my wife and I, uh, my uh, good woman, good mother, really good wife. Uh, we just and they said, "Oh, you mean you reached your best before date?" <laughs> I thought that expression was so cute because mm. it was uh, yeah, it's a really clear explanation. Yeah, actually, mm. we reached our best before date, yeah. and uh, every, I was talking to my stepdaughter last night. She finished border Secu border security college, oh, good for her. and she finally got a job. She starts in two weeks, yeah. and she's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may, my three crowning achievements of my lifetime: my daughter and my son and my stepdaughter. There and. And at the end of the day, what else matters? That's the bottom line. I mean, I, yeah. we, we all know I have never wanted to have children. That's been very, yeah, very the, clear. But I, I have advocated and worked with children and youth in some of the most vulnerable yeah, communities, no the newcomer community. Right. Um, and at the end of the day, I go, what, what, what? For someone who really is a big fan of kids. Yeah. You've spent 25 out of the 40 years of your career working with and being the voice for. Oh. And you don't know, you have no idea how many people, kids and adults mm -hmm. alike, hear something that you say and you don't realize they're going, yeah, that's, and, and they walk away with a good feeling, of, mm -hmm. even if it's for 10 minutes that day. And you can't put a dollar value No, you sure can't. That's on that. for sure. And I think that's what a lot of those of us of a certain age now, as we're trying to make this all work, yeah. um, are really looking at what are our, what are our values? Yeah. What is it that we truly, truly need? And how much energy do you want to devote to one specific thing when if you kind of spread that out, everything would benefit? Yeah, I just that call I just got when I got yeah. here, the one I hung up on, or mm -hmm. I said I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. Get, she's does my tech stuff. Yes, and uh, I do a lot of it myself just because I <laughs> I do. But I have my the the uh, victims no longer web page I did yes. for La Latin America and yeah. all those messages, the video messages we did mm -hmm. really need it. Yes. So anyway, I have all that stuff, and then I have my music, mm -hmm. and then I'm doing this, and I have my building. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I, I talked to her, I want to wrap it all into one. Yes. So I have a page for my, this, so whatever happens here, it automatically, like I want to get a package together yeah. so I can manage what I love to do, which is all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, it should be interesting to see how it all works out when somebody, well, if I can pull it together, because most importantly, the victim's no longer page. Yes. I have to get it uh, uh, taken over by people in Latin America or mm -hmm. it will, it'll serve no purpose, mm -hmm. but to make me look good. And I'm not interested. <laughs> no, I mean, I think we've lived it. Yeah. We've told our story um, in more than one language. Yeah, in more than one language, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and, and again, if I'm, t I'm just going to touch on, on that. I mean, when you reached out to me and said, would you? Yeah. And I struggled with what that would look like. Yeah. Um, and I've been fairly open yeah. with my experiences. 
And I know my husband was a little apprehensive. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, okay, I've got to figure, I've got to figure out how to tell this story. And then I realized there's many, many stories. Right. But just the ability to to have that conversation with myself. Yep. And realize what my survival looked yeah. like. Because I'd spent so many years saying, well, I didn't experience that, and that feeling wasn't well, there. Well, yeah, and you have to. What's um... the big whoop about that? And I think I, I, I don't know whether I said or not. In, Whitewashed in the, it, or just I, well, just a, I'm didn't avoided looking at it. Well, I, th I, I think what I did is I, I absolutely refused to see the severity. I wondered, and, I wondered about that myself. And the, to be and honest the, with you damage that was done and the role that I may or may not have played in some of that. So, I mean, that's me. It's like, let's analyze this to death. And my friends over the years have said, but when you're a child... Yeah, you had no choice in any of it. Exactly. There isn't, you played no role in it. Exactly. Yeah, but it's a, it's a hard to get there. It, well, it... It is because there is, and again, and you were born in fifty six. Yeah. So I was born in fifty five, but we are from that generation where, as you've been very articulate, you don't talk about that. Yeah, you, suck it up, and, get and on, get on with be it. Be tough. The past is the past. All the things that people say yes. when they don't want to yes. acknowledge it. Yes. And uh, just shame you one more time. <laughs> well, and, our and they don't mean to, but they do. No. Well, they, they're dealing with their own issues about in, their inability yes. to deal with it. So. And our past is our present. Yeah. I mean, without question, I, yep. you know, do I want to sit and relive those incidences yeah. um, or that period of time? Because it was two or three years, four years, five years again. Don't know because I spent so many years saying, well... You were a teenager. What did you know? Yeah. You just, you know, you, there was no father figure and. Yeah, yeah. And I did a bit of that in the article, but, but the, the message that I wanted to send regarding that piece is you got to have a conversation with yourself first. Yeah, you sure do. 100%. Because if you don't know where you are with that, then how do you know where to go to get And if you've never had you the need. full conversation with yourself, yeah. then yeah, you certainly do. Yeah, yeah, that's a scary one to have too, man. And well, it is in Damabil's character, but it's a very, very expensive a, exercise. Yeah, no kidding. And then, so, uh, and you don't know, you want, you want to make sure that uh, you got to take care of yourself and all of the yeah. processes that you go through. Yeah. So I guess... Um, I seen you on the weekend. You were doing a little uh, video. <laughs> you were in a bar somewhere, oh, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looked pretty interesting. No, I was... Georgina, I'm not always in a bar. No. Um, yes, that is. I was at the Bell Tower, which is a community center in right. Fort Erie, yeah, which yeah. is where I live. My brother used to gallop racehorses down there all yes. the time. That this bar, uh, this community center is owned by a gay couple. Yeah. Um, one who happens to be a drag queen. Yeah. Uh, I've seen she, him. He, uh, and she has been for years. Him or her, what's the noun? Well, I said in the video, because it was his birthday, I said I would never ask a lady her age. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> so um, I figure, screw it, people. I'm gay. Don't judge me. Yeah, yeah, If yeah, I yeah. use the wrong pronoun. Noun, yeah, pronoun or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm having a conversation with some, with a man in a dress whose name is Chantal Cartier. Yeah. So, and she was a Bailey's girl back in the day. Right. When Bailey's hired drag queens to travel the world to promote Bailey's Irish cream. Nice. So, uh, and that was the venue that I, Zen and I got married in. Yeah. So, they came to the community. They were introducing Fort Erie Pride. Right. That had never existed. Obviously, it got canceled. So every opportunity I get, I will go in there. Lend and, a hand. And interview, donate, yeah. do what we can, support the community. Sure. So I went in for the first Gay Pride fundraiser yeah. Yeah. and did an interview with her. 
<laughs> there you go. Let's get that pronoun <laughs> right, eh? And then I, when he was announcing that he he was going to do she he she yeah. was going to do the second fundraiser, right? I said, why don't I come in and talk to you about stage three and the reopening and what that looks like, right? And I was really pushing the community, community, community. So it was her birthday. So there she was, and all of her fat. Yeah, she looked good too. Was just like just, right into it. Just yeah, yeah. Without any question at yeah. all she's but she's been doing it for 30 something years yeah, yeah that's who she is and that's that's yeah, who she that's is who and she that's is. not the brand of the bell tower by any stretch of the imagination but it's entertainment isn't it kind of nifty in this day and age that somebody can just yes do that and yes. be that and be who they are and, and just without question hang it right out there and they're there and, and uh yeah that's a it's almost like you don't the it is important, without beating the whole subject to death, uh, it is important to, to always keep having the conversation. Well, and showing <coughs> that community has many different faces. Well, and like, for example, black people in the States were freed 140 years ago, yes. and they're still fighting today. So, you know, if you think you got your freedom, keep talking it, about it, because if you want to keep your freedom, keep it alive. Well, and you have to, <coughs> and I did... I did. I was invited by York Pride yeah. to be the host for three events that nice. they did. Nice. I felt very, very blessed to I do bet. that. I bet. And in the closing night event, right. I interviewed a drag queen um, who's on the Canadian version of RuPaul's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the questions was, what does pride mean to you? We have the standard questions. Yeah, yeah. And, and she looked at me and said, well, what does pride mean to you? And I said, you need to understand that at 64 years of age, yeah. coming out and trying to make a statement needed to look very, very different. We couldn't do it gently. No. We had to come out. Yeah, just come bursting out of the And body. just do it. <laughs> do it, it. I mean, yeah, yeah. And people have said to me, Grant, you never opened the door and came out of the closet. Yeah, you just... Yeah, threw it open yeah, and out do, you do. came. So, and I never really... We never think about that yeah. piece. And she said to me, thank you. And I said, for what? And she said, if it wasn't for mm. your generation... We could not be who yeah one hundred percent today yeah one hundred percent. So the, to your uh, point, that conversation doesn't stop happening. Can't stop happening. No, and and Chantel or Mark, um, his message is always the same. We are not a gay bar. This is not a gay community center. This is a safe space for everyone. Everybody, yeah. And that's why I. That's great message. And you know where that message really resonates. Black lives matter, all lives matter, you know, gay lives matter, but they're all different subjects and they have to be addressed and spoken to as such. You can't use all lives matter as a way to not look at or as a defense against people saying, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, I get tired of hearing all, all lives. Well, I, I shouldn't say I get tired of hearing it. I kind of subscribe to it. Like I, well, and but Nelson Mahmoudi, I don't know if you know Nelson. No. He's um, a 20 year old. Uh, um, political science major from Georgina. I interviewed him okay. about a month ago. Okay. Yeah, a really sharp kid. It really yeah. uh, he's done volunteer work at the Arts Center here. Okay. He's done volunteer work for I think Margaret's campaign for mm -hmm. different like he's a really astute kid. Yeah. Nice nice kid. He's 20. I call it I call people that are 40 a kid now. Hello, so please. My son's 40. <laughs> he turned 40 the other day and I still think of him as a kid. So, but anyway, he uh, he said, you know, because you would get the Black Lives Matter came up, and I brought up All Lives Matter. He said, well, good, I'm glad you did that, because there you are saying All Lives Matter to avoid looking at Black Lives Matter. And if you're doing that, then uh, for that purpose, it's not right. And and that's a challenge, because again, and forgive me, <laughs> not everything has to be politically driven. No, of course it's not. It's a conversation, and yes, everyone, every community is entitled I believe, to the same airtime. Yeah, of course. And by saying all lives matter, that's essentially what we're Well, it's two saying. messages. It's all lives matter is a true statement, and it's yes. very real, and it's very true. 
Yes. But if and, and if you are saying it in the context text of meaning not, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. If and if you're using that phrase to avoid looking at Black Lives Matter, that's a whole. Lot. So it's in whoever is speaking is the one that's. Well, and, it, and and that's why if you noticed in that in that video with Chantel, I said for those of you who don't know me, yeah, 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 like no one. Um, I said, I'm York Region's only openly gay TV host. Yeah. Because that's what York Pride decided when they did the opening of Pride. They right. had my image and music, and that's how I was billed. That's how I was introduced. Yeah. And now I use that every time I do a Facebook video sure. that has a message, yeah. other than I'm losing my mind running through the park. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, because that is part of the conversation, and we do need right. to put faces to all communities. Do you struggle? Just... Do you struggle not to let your gay <laughs> life, or not your gay life, your gay persona, overcome what it is you're actually there to do? Some people would say that the persona, one of the many personas, sometimes overshadows. The subject matter. Um, I thought you might struggle with that sometimes. I, I uh, Well, it, it, interestingly enough, I had a conversation with someone about that just this past weekend at oh. that event um, because they said, we don't know who you are. Yeah, I'm Gay Gary. Or Gay Grant, sorry. <laughs> yeah, like... But you don't, I don't really, I don't. No, well, I don't think I that you I do. I just, see, uh, but well, I could well, see it. But well, it is, it is, it's. For me, it's the equivalent, true. yeah, the equivalent of that is sometimes when I'm speaking, uh, the, the, the most humility I can muster yeah. gives me the most strength I could possibly yeah. have. In humility, you have so much strength because yeah. you're really genuine. Yeah. And then your humility gets you some success because, and then as the success comes, you start getting more gregarious and more, and then you realize, oh, wait a minute. You know what I mean? There's a well, there's yeah, a bridge I, there that you have to be aware of all the time or something. Yes, I don't know. Sometimes there certainly are some people who love me for the you know the many personas of Grant Peckford. Sure. But I think if I have realized any success as as an individual who people want to hear the right. message, right. Um, it it is because I truly am. Who I am. No, no, the substance is definitely yeah, there. You but, wouldn't be there. That is, that is. Yeah. But there, but there is that where I, where I'm thinking, okay, Grant, put your hands in your pockets. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need yeah. to. Be yeah. Get doing back. You know, get back to work. <laughs> you don't need to be doing that. So, yeah, not so much now, but I think probably ten or fifteen years ago, when I really reached the um, peak, the the no. BS meter, yeah. where I needed to be, yeah. I thought, you know what, that's not my journey. If that's what you're seeing, and if that's what I'm projecting, and you can't see through that, then come and have a conversation w with yeah, yeah. me. Yeah. But yeah, to I've short answer, learned... yes, I have struggled with that. Yeah, I have, I, I've learned... I, I I don't know what I've learned, you know. I, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But somehow I come to a place where, uh, with people like yourself, yeah. or somebody I would normally have a reaction to, in yes. terms of okay, I would notice that or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And with Gary, the, with the way that he, the advice that he gives himself, yes. what would normally be like, hey, wait a minute, who the hell is that person or whatever? Yeah. I've learned to just relax and just see, oh, and then and then you learn. I watched you for a while. I yeah. I and then you learn. Okay, the substance is there. This, this is all very real and this is uh yeah yeah it's really neat well and i think the real demonstration of that was the interview that gary did with me sitting on his in front of his fireplace about yeah, I the think coming I've seen out that. yeah i believe i've seen that where it was very casual yeah but again when i watched that i went oh i hope people were listening to what i was saying especially the parents yeah. of those kids that are struggling sure with their child's coming out because they think that somehow they have a role there. Yeah. That the issue is there. <laughs> well, <laughs> that parents it's, always it's, make it about themselves. I'm yes. not a good and parent. And my mom did too. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. and my mom and dad did too. And yeah. uh, you couldn't even say, 
it's there's if, if it's almost like if you said you were flawed in any way or or you're having that does that mean I'm a bad parent or like they they would take it that way and you weren't saying that mm -hmm. you were just trying to say I'm hurting here and I need I need mm -hmm. you to help me take care of this but you couldn't do it. Well, no, and, it, and, and uh, yeah, it, it it's about hearing what odd, your kid is. Oddly or, enough, or what we're all saying. I mean, you know, oh, I'm an active listener, right? But are you yeah. hearing anything that's being said to you? My mom and dad were uh, really decent people, and yeah. and in the end, I had a really good. Uh, I fell back on a good upbringing. Oddly enough, with all the dysfunction, I mean, but they had no idea what I was going through, and so the life that we had, yeah. the the life I grew up in, I yeah. I got five brothers and two sisters I chat with every day, like yeah. every week, and I'm going, I'm this Saturday, I'm all eight of us are getting together again, one more year to see who, see who's still here, you know, like, mm. like we're all still here, we're having dinner on Saturday, so mm. that's kind of neat. And so I had a good upbringing, yeah, and it's a, it's a damn good thing. It's like when you look at your parents when we talk about these flaws but they're not flaws in them they're the, they're the sign of the times that's the way it was in those days and kids are seen and not heard yes and no matter how how life was in your home when you went out into the street you acted like i lived in a leave it to beaver museum oh, you know without question yeah you I mean, never talked in the street never. about what went on at home ever never, and, uh, ever yeah ever. remember that like it was Just, uh, it's bizarre it was, when you think back i mean i've said this i've been very open about this um my mother was a battered wife until yeah. the day she died, and she died at 56 from leukemia. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to talk about that to people that I trusted, yeah. adults, but it was that whole, you cannot do that. And until I actually left home, yeah. no one really stopped to think for one moment that maybe what I was saying was actually what we were living. Because yeah, you walked out. You had the you had the stepfather and the mother and the brother from the second marriage and yeah. you go out and you present that yeah. and that's just really really sad. So it you got to be who you are. Yeah, it takes a while. It, it takes it. It does. It's 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 a journey. And I'm, and do I live who I am? as much as I can yeah me too me too I really uh, I these can. days I really try to relax into it and you know heaven forbid somebody comes up with a character flop yeah I guess I do have it yeah all right so so what <laughs> anything else you know and then I get on with my life and uh, yeah I'm I'm in a kind of a happy place in my life right now and what more can we ask for N yeah nothing you yeah. know like again there's it's people this... that live their whole lives and never oh get there my. Gosh, I mean, I have amazing friends that I can probably count on one hand. You've had a pretty interesting life I too. Have, so a lot. I truly have. Like a lot to be grateful for there. Without question. Yeah, me too. So that's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I just um. If there's anything that you <laughs> oh want to, we've covered everything. Yeah, we've covered the whole nine yards. Just the, what I uh, want to really get out there is that Georgina Art Center and Gallery were coming back. Yeah, I was. We uh, don't know what that looks like. We've got a new strategic plan. We've got well, a, a board that's Why don't committed. we plan on doing this if uh, if the need arises when the time comes and yes. you're getting ready to go at it? Yes. Let's structure a, a real solid 20-minute presentation about what the arts yeah. center is going to look like when yes. you're ready. Yes. Very, oh, man, very. I would I would lot enjoy doing that. So, yeah, uh, sure. so if you can lean forward and say goodbye and hit that red button to... <laughs> My God, look at that pimple there. Yeah, there he is again, I'm checking saying. it out. <laughs> Checking himself oh, out. Oh, I hate it. There you go. I'll see you later. Seems like yesterday He always put me in the corner as he kept cutting up my name Well today's gonna be that day 
take a long look in the mirror now, honey Cause I ain't gonna stay, I'm on my way Put the pedal to the metal, little suitcase Gonna get the wheels turning, no time to waste Gonna get myself on my way I can barely see it in the rear view mirror Wars over and the smoke gets started to clear Hey, yeah, cause I'm on my way Trouble